I want to begin by saying that uh, Kobe Bryant retired from basketball. He wrote a love letter to his sport, which became a poem entitled Dear Basketball. He enlisted the help of animator director Glenn Keane to create the animation and another good friend, John Williams, to create the film's soundtrack. The film went on to win an Academy Award for Best Short Animated Film in 2018. Now, Matthew A. Cherry began his career in the NFL, and in 2007, he retired from the sport. He moved to L.A., and he started a new career as a PA, working his way up from uh, doing music videos and short films. And in 2017, Cherry decided to create a Kickstarter campaign to help fund an animated short called Hair Love, about a father attempting to style his daughter's hair. And soon a children's book was published. So the, the book was created first, and then came the film. So anyway, after seeing this film, Hair Love, I reached out to Matthew A. Cherry to see if I could get an interview with him. Unfortunately, he was busy promoting it because it's nominated for this year's Academy Award. I was floored when I was told that I could talk to the directors of the film instead. So I'm very pleased and a little in awe of my two guests here, uh, Bruce Smith and Everett Downing Jr., Welcome to Animated Educated. I just want to let you know that um, I reached out to uh, uh, Matthew Cherry to see about interviewing him, but he got a little too busy. I don't know why, yeah. you know, uh, but I... Oh, yeah, he's on, yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. He doesn't have anything going on. Yeah. I have no idea why he would be too busy. You're, I know, Bruce, your work from the Proud family uh, all the way back into, like, Baby's Kids. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, so I, went, I always ask my guests, you know, what first inspired you to learn animation? Um, for me, you know, it's like I grew up uh, always loving to draw. You know, I was a huge fan of Flintstones and Jetsons, and that was sort of like my drawing style. I don't think I was a great draftsman at all. So I just gra- <laughs> gravitated to a style that I thought was easy for me to draw and communicate through and, and just kind of stuck with it. You know, through you know, through my childhood, and realized that I was actually decent at it. Ended up uh, really sort of honing my chops at a school called uh, California Institute of the Arts, mm-hmm. which is I would yeah, say is kind of the if this were basketball, Cal Arts <laughs> would have be would be like Duke. Yeah, you know, right, right. <laughs> it's kind of the 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 mecca of of sort of like animation learning at least. And uh, and then from there, like, you know, sort of slowly got to really understand the industry as I got out of school and got lots of jobs as an animator here and there and really uh, sort of discovered my style along the way. Just been a huge Disney fan. And once I got to school, I really started to, to understand what made an animator great by studying all the great animators and right. really tried to 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 uh, hone my craft around artists like, you know, Milk Call and Frank Thomas. Exactly. Um, these guys were excellent animators, and then really discovering styles at that point between like Chuck Jones and Tex Avery. Mm-hmm. You know, these these are guys who were who were stylists for sure, great animators, but really had a style that that cemented itself in this medium in terms of comedy and timing and such. Mm-hmm. All these things kind of gather, and and it sort of culminates in this moment of hair love for me. Mm-hmm. And you were a Disney animator. You animated. Uh, yes. The... Yeah. I mean, Disney was certainly. Yeah, uh, uh, a stop for me. I mean, a few, uh, I've been to Disney a few times. Animated on movies like you know Tarzan, Emperor's New Groove, Princess and the Frog, Roger Rabbit. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. so yeah, it's 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 and and that's been incredible because of all the artists that you sit alongside that you know that you admire also. You know that they're living, breathing beings, and mm-hmm. you get to really usurp all of their you know their their tricks into the trade. And again, it just kind of helps shape who you are. And Everett, I know I looked at your bio and I saw that you your first couple jobs were on Veggie Tales. Yeah, okay. I, I came. That, that is correct. I mean, I came at it from a different angle. Like when I first started, I went to college for illustration at first. I went, I attended SVA. I wanted to be a comic book artist. I wanted, I wanted right. to draw the X Men and Spider Man. You know, and uh, while attending school, like I was a big animation fan, but um, I didn't know. It's like you know, I didn't know anything about the industry. And uh, one of my instructors saw my stuff, and he was like saying, like, you know, the way you draw, like, it's very fluid, like, it's very, like, you could, like, it seems like you should be working in animation. Have you ever considered that? Mm-hmm. And uh, I hadn't up until that point. And uh, just kind of from his encouragement, I, I, I kind of made the switch. Um, I also, you know, that year I was attending, I got my mind blown. You know, like, I was always a big Disney fan, mm-hmm. but a really good friend of mine. 
just to get just to date myself a little bit, a really good friend of mine uh, introduced. Um, he had like a uh, bootleg copy of uh, Akira, like you know, um, oh, yeah. back in the day, and he showed it to me, and that just blew my mind. Like I did, like I was like, "What is this?" Like I was familiar with anime, but like Akira was just on another level. And so, um, and he was really telling me, he's like, you know, like storyboarding, that's a thing. Like, you know, it's like, it's, it's a close, it's really close to like, you know, being comic books. And, um, I just, from there, I just kind of became obsessed with animation and, um, Mm -hmm. you know, I really wanted to be like a, an an animator, like Mm -hmm. a traditional animator at Disney. Right. So I, I switched majors. I, I switched schools to Columbia college. And that's actually how I got Everett. Yeah. I, I went to Columbia College too. Yeah. Well, I mean, what what year did you go? Uh, I was there from eighty two to like eighty seven. Okay, so that was that was a little bit before my time. I I, yeah. I was there in uh, like right before I was there because I I I left there like ninety ninety. Okay, ninety ninety one. Right. Um. And uh. Yeah. That's yeah. So you know Columbia College. Yeah. You know, I, I, in, I, in, I actually taught there. I taught animation there for a, uh, a few years, and oh, then so for, Barry, you know all those guys. Barry, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he was uh, the head of the program there when I was going. Right, yeah. right. So uh, yeah, um, I had a, fi- a did film. Did you know Luis as well, Luis Contreras? Did you know him? I don't remember. He was the name. one of the animation. He he actually he's one of the guys who really got me into storyboarding. Um, cool. You know, I consider him like a huge influence on me. And he told me, he's the one who said, look at my work and said, you should really consider storyboarding. And he's like, you're a great animator, but think about storyboarding because you'd be really good at it. He got me the job at Big Idea, actually. So it was through my Columbia College connection. That's how I got the job at Big Idea. And I was storyboarding there, but I wanted to be an animator. Um, I ended up animating on, I don't know, uh, there's this show called 321 Penguin. So I was one of the guys that helped develop on that. And I I boarded on it. I animated on it. and that actually got my gave me my first break into feature. Uh-huh. So from there, I was able to use that like all that that reel got me my job at Blue Sky Studios. So my first job was animating on the very first original Ice Age. Uh, but while I was animating, yeah, I realized I loved story. And I, and I always joke that like you know storyboarding got me into into animation. And then I went to switch to animation. I spent a, a good portion of my career trying to get back into the story. So, <laughs> uh, but I had a great, I mean, you know, like, I mean, you know, I worked on some amazing films. Like I animated on Ice Age, Robots, Ice Age 2. I made the jump um, over to Pixar where I worked on Ratatouille. And I worked on every movie up until Monsters University. And that that was when I made the switch into story over at Pixar. And um, yeah, I've been running ever since. So. Uh, is this your first time you've worked together on something or... Yes, I guess so, huh? Because we've been in studios at the same place, but never yeah. worked on the same project together. Yes, I mean, yeah. I think there was an opportunity right at Paramount, right? Because we had yeah. talked, and I, I, you know, I, was, I was helping out John Carr, but I think I think the idea was like I was really hoping to like <laughs> help you out. Yeah, that, that would have been so. fun. We talked about a lot about that. So I just want to get to the to the look of uh, Hair Love. Now it's a. It's a traditional animation look, um, and I know, you know, we've got this resurgence of 2D, you know, everybody's going 3D, and then 2D was starting to go downhill, but now with the, like, the release yeah. of Klaus and, uh, and this film, it's getting a lot of attention, so um, uh, what was the software did you use to make this film? We actually ended up using Harmony. We were looking at a couple others, um, uh, but Harmony proved to be the best. It's... Harmony is great because um, we kind of wanted to build the character. You know, they, they they allow you to do kind of like the rigging, so you can actually kind of bake in a lot of. It, it's really easy to keep characters on model. And that. So it's so like a, a, a puppet in animation with a rig. Yeah. Well, we yeah, we, I agree. I mean, I mean we, we, no, go we, ahead. Little, we yeah. took some extra. No, no, I'm just going to kick to you, Bruce. Like, yeah, we did a little extra. Like, go ahead, Bruce. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's really sort of like a mix of the two. It's kind of like yeah, it's. Well, we use the puppet. We also use uh, hand-drawn animation, also in in very specific areas. You know what I mean? Uh, that that the puppet couldn't necessarily do. So, uh, so it's a mixture of both. I've done rigging like that, and you have to get them all 360 degree. But there's some shots in there where, like when the the girl, you know, hugs the dad. That yeah. to me yeah. has to be. You can't make a puppet look correct like that. You know, <laughs> you got to draw it. Well, what we would do is right. actually we would the bones of of all the shots had the hand-drawn aesthetic to them. Mm-hmm. And then you would just lace the puppet 
over the hand drawn. You see what I mean? So mm-hmm. uh, it would yeah. become the guide. The hand drawn animation would become the guide. Okay. No, I was going to say we didn't want the technology to lead the art. We wanted the art to lead the technology. So right. yeah, we had all our guys yep. complaining on that stuff. So. so the book came out first, and then the animated, and then he went to Kickstart to get a funding for the animation of the film. No, it's funny. So the the book. So he ran the Kickstarter, and then one of the um, they 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 made the book as one of the levels of like for the Kickstarter. Ah. Um, and then they got picked up right away. The book got kicked, picked up right away. And we like, we had these amazing drawings done by Vashti Harris, Harrison. And we were really trying to like, really kind of trying to match her book. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like right. in terms of the style. Mm-hmm. And as we were getting these images back, we we're like, this is, we need, we need to keep, keep it in this style. This is great. Let's like, let's make it look like this, you know? And that was difficult because we were kind of going back and forth. It's like, you know, the book was being done sometimes at the same time that we were doing things. So, like, we did a whole approach. Uh, we did a bunch of character designs that were based on earlier Bossy drawings. And then, like, later when the book stuff came back, we're like, oh, we got to adjust it because, you know, we were really falling in love with the book stuff. So um, there's some back and forth between the two. But the book came out first. The truth has been solved. <laughs> Uh, okay, so, um, oh, uh, we have a question from someone who's a student here at Woodbury University. She wanted to say that, that this film meant a lot to her. I want to read what she says here. She says, uh, as a half-black kid with a white mom and a black dad who has a shaved head, there's a constant battle against my hair. It took me a long time to understand how to treat it. Your animation was so gosh darn wholesome and beautiful that it's <laughs> currently my favorite short. It's inspired me to try to make more black characters ever changing hairstyles. I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to bring the story to life. And as a question, will you make more animation like these in the future? Uh, thank you. And yes, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, for forever in myself, I mean, I think we're, you know, thankfully we live in a day and age where everybody is, is trying to, uh, to really push the idea of a diverse palette, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, yeah, and 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 tr- and and practicing inclusion. So really, uh, it's 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 time for us to really kind of push, push these projects forward. You know, I know uh, Ev has have Ev has ideas. I know I have some ideas. I have things that I'm actually executing now. So, uh, so yes, look forward to to more characters of color on the screen in the very near future. Yeah, definitely. You know, you'll be hearing more stories in the future for sure. Are you thinking of doing more 2D or is it like 3D or you know, it's just animation? What's your opinion about that? There you go. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's really just I think it's really just animation. I mean, I think that. Uh, uh, animation as a whole is still, you know, in a place where, you know, I would say we're kind of stuck in, in sort of a, a, a kids genre. I mean, I think um, animation itself should never be treated as as a genre. It should just be treated yeah. as a, another medium to tell stories that can fit in lots of other genres. So, um, you know, when you when you look at a, a, a movie like uh, I Lost Your Body, for example, right? Uh, yeah, I lost my body. And and you know it's 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 a great piece of work, but it's not necessarily a kids' film, you know. But it's just as captivating, you know, as an animated uh, movie itself. And that's what we want to sit. We want to sit, you know, in in sort of like the the lexicon of, of all films, you know. And we're just the the purest flight of fancy, really. Animation is. We're yeah. definitely, you know, you know, me and Bruce are, are definitely very interested in in, in pushing like, you know. Uh, what like American animation could be because you know and it's happening you know like again we have with now so many platforms we're going to see a lot more stories um, and I I think that in the next few years it's really going to going to grow and uh, I'm 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 ready for it I'm excited now when you did this film was it all done yeah. here or like sometimes projects are all storyboarded here the character design are in the U.S. that they're, they're all you know, the package is put together, but then all the animation goes overseas to be animated. Um, what was the case with uh, Hair Love? Hair Love, we did it all here. I mean, um, you know, I, I was brought out early and I was really helping, you know, with like to develop it visually and also like storyboard and, you know, like I was leading, leading the story group on it. And then, 
you know, Bruce, we brought Bruce when we got into uh, production uh, and he really helped like us, like really um, add a lot of depth to the short. But like the studios that we work with, Six Point Harness, they're here. They're here in L.A., you know. Um, and I think it was Mercury. Like what they were the ones that, you know, our SWAT guys were saying. I think that's the only one who uh, I think we're, uh, we had to go abroad for. Is that oh. right, Chris? Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, I think really, you know, what Six Point um, had added to, I mean, you know, they were the first studio landed. We really did a lot of amazing work with those guys. But we realized when the workload really hit, uh, that we just needed some support and that's where uh, uh mercury animation uh jumped in and we all sort of like huddled together you know and yeah. scored a touchdown kind of like in, in matthew's terminology okay so the local yeah. like la <laughs> company was six point harness that created the animation of this film that's that was correct one of, yep. it was one of the uh, studios that actually uh, produced the animation yes oh okay great yeah great. so everett when did you first hear about this project? I actually first heard about. I actually saw uh, saw the Kickstarter when it went live. Ah. And again, like as a as a as a black father who deals with mm-hmm. hair and his <laughs> animation, I was like, I'm all in. You know what I mean? Like I'm in. And uh, I contributed to to the Kickstarter. And you know, I even like you know, I even like messaged Matt Matt Cherry, and I was like, Hey, you know, like I'm in animation. If you ever need help, whatever. I you oh, know, awesome. Whatever I can do, I believe in a project. And, but that wasn't like, you know, I mean, he got deluged. He had so much stuff. That wasn't kind of how I got in touch with him. Actually, I was, um, I'd been working with Karen Tolliver at Sony. Um, I was developing over there for a little while. And she, and, um, she actually invited me to, you know, to, to meet Matt and, um, to consult. Um, because Matt, you know, he was coming from live action and he didn't have a lot of animation experience. So they just wanted to kind of talk to me and get kind of, my feedback on the script and like get some advice and stuff. And I, I, I sat down with them <clears throat> and we went over the script, which is great. It was super charming. I was like, I love it. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of weighed in like, you know, on, on a bit, a bunch of things like, you know, 2d versus 3d and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, you know, after that meeting, I just went on my way and that was it. And then um, about a week later, like two weeks later, uh, Karen contacted me and she's like, Hey, you know, I know you're, you know, kind of busy guy. I got a lot of things going. Um, but would you be interested in, in helping uh, Matthew direct? Mm-hmm. So, and for me, I was like, yes, like immediately. It was like, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, I tried to play cold, like, oh, you know, well, maybe, yeah. Yeah. But, like, I, <laughs> but I was all in, man. I was all in. So, um, I, I, I was, I got involved pretty early and, you know, really tried to help lay the foundation for the short. I also want to find out if you have any advice for uh, the young filmmakers or animators out there about getting into the, the business here. Yeah, I've, I've got a couple of tidbits. Um, yeah. I would say that um, there's no better teacher than experience. I mean, you can you can research stuff and you can get instruction all day long. But like, I think if you want to make films, start making films, start failing quickly, you know, so you can learn. That's how you learn. Like, you know, we have a stigmatism against failing. And uh, that is like, you know, that's how the system works. That's that's how you get better. If you want to be a filmmaker, start making films. You know, make them. You know, start small, and as you get more confident, get bigger. You know, try to stick with your vision. It's 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 a hard tightrope to walk between like, oh, I want to stick to my vision, and this is not working. Like you gotta have you have an open mind to criticism, but at the same time, there's a certain like nowhere. It's like okay, this is just, I this is how I want to try this this way. But like, if you keep getting a note on something that you're doing, like oh. You know, your stuff is way too long or like, you know, if you keep getting that note, that's not your, it's not their imagination. It's probably true. <laughs> so um, learn how to listen. That's, and that's a really important skill. Like learn how to take notes. So, and just get ready to grind. Get ready because it's a lot of it's like grinding and a lot of, a lot of hustle. So can you uh, announce your um, website? Yeah. I mean, if you want to see my portfolio or whatever, you can go to www.edowning, E-D-O-W-N-I-N-G dot com and um uh yeah that has a link to a bunch of my other sites yeah i, I know you're busy and you got to get uh get back to work there, <laughs> so i don't want to keep you yeah uh, anymore but i think you answered a lot of our questions yeah. here i want to thank you both for again for coming on animated educated and uh taking the time to talk about your involvement with hair love i know i'll be rooting for you guys since it is up for uh, academy award so uh good luck to you both thank, thank you for having us 
And uh, I want to thank uh, Ryan Murphy and Garth Burkhardt of Sony Pictures Animation for setting this uh, interview up. And I also want to thank uh, Matthew A. Cherry. You know, when he isn't pushing the film, maybe, you know, anyway. I'm just glad that he replied to my email and got the ball rolling on this interview as well. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel, Animated Educated. It's spelled very oddly, but that's how you pronounce it. Uh, you can learn more also by visiting animatededucated.blogspot.com to learn more about animation and other fun stuff. This is Jim Richardson saying thank you for listening.